In this video, we'll be looking at the graph client tools and we'll be using the graph client tools to interact with the graph and the subgraphs that this contains. If you're not aware of the graph, it is a graph indexing protocol for querying networks like Ethereum. To get started, I have a simple TypeScript project set up that is running TS Node. Let's first install the graph protocol client CLI. Once that's installed, we'll go ahead and create a new file in the root of our project and we'll call this .graphclientrc.yml. It's inside of here, we'll define our sources or subgraphs. We'll give each of our source a name and in this case, for the first example, we'll call this ENS. We'll then specify that the GraphQL handler has an endpoint. If we head to the graphs subgraph directory, we can here search for ENS protocol. We can then see the query URL for the subgraph ENS protocol. I'm going to be using the hosted service for this, but what you'll want to do is sign in and connect your wallet, subscribe with some GRT, and then you can get your API key and provide it to the URL. For the purposes of this video, we'll just use this URL here. With our YAML file complete, then let's move over to the package JSON. Instead of here, I want to add two scripts. The first script is going to be called code gen. And here we want to use the graph client to automatically generate some code for us. So we'll call graph client and then we'll specify build. Then the third script that we'll add will be to run the serve dev command from the graph client. This will allow us to run graphical and make queries to all of our subgraphs on our local host machine. Then if we run npm run dev, this will start the graph client on our local machine. We can then head on over to that URL. Now inside of here, we can see that we have some documentation and it includes all of the different fields and types for the subgraph ENS. So here we can get a list of all of our domains, we can get any transfers, we can get new owners and much more. Let's first check that everything's running by making a query to fetch all of the registrations within ENS. Here we'll grab the domain and we'll grab the name of that domain. And then for this registration, we can get the expiry date, then we can get the label name and we can also fetch any other field we like, such as the cost. Then if we execute this query, we can see here we have a list of domains. Then if we go back to our query, we can see here that we can pass arguments and we can fetch certain registrations by block, or we can specify that we want the first five domains. We can also specify the order of domains that come back. So here we may want to specify that we want to order our domains by those that expire, and then we can specify a direction. We can also filter domains using the where filter. And here we can filter all of our domains by any of the fields that are on the record. And it has special features for things like where it is not a value, where it's greater than, equal to, or uh, where it's less than, or when it's inside of an array and much more. Let's remove all of this for now because we just want to use this query inside of our application to test that everything's working. So here, this is the local graphical interface. This is running our ENS subgraph and it's using the subgraph that we configured in the graph client. If we now go back, we can see inside of our project directory that we have the folder graph client. And inside of here, we have some sources, ENS and the schema. And then we have this index file and a schema.graphql. This root schema.graphql file will contain all of the different types for all of your different subgraphs. And we'll explore what that looks like in just a second. If we scroll to the bottom of this file, what we should see is that we have some functions exported. One special function that we want to look at is the execute function. This allows us to execute any query against the subgraphs that we have configured instead of our graph client. Let's create a new file inside of the directory GraphQL and we'll call this get registrations.gql. We'll then make a query to fetch the registrations and we'll fetch the registration ID, expiry date and the domain name. With this now done, inside of the graph client RC file, we'll want to provide an array of all of those different documents. In this case, we just have the get registrations GraphQL file. With this saved, we can then run npm run codegen, and this will build a new SDK. If we head on over to the graph client file and we have a look inside of the index file that we did previously, if we now scroll to the bottom, we can see that we have some additional code added because we added that get registrations query. We can see that we have a get SDK function that contains the query get registrations. And when we call that function, that will return a promise that is making a request to the ENS subgraph. If we go up, we can also see that we have a document get registrations, and this contains the GraphQL tag and the query that we previously done and returns this as the type document node. Then further up, we have some types generated automatically for us for the query and for the variables that this query accepts. In this case, we don't have any variables, but if we did, those will be automatically fully typed as well. 
Now inside of the index.ts file, I'm going to import from that generated GraphQL client the function get built graph SDK. Then from this, we can destructure get registrations. And then we'll create an async function and we'll call this main. And inside of here, we can make a request to get registrations. It's inside of here, we pass our variables. So if we had the variable first to fetch the first five registrations, then we could pass it inside of here. We don't have any variables defined just yet, so we'll leave that empty. But from the response, we can see that this is fully typed. And if we hover over registrations, we can see here that we have the registration type and that we are fetching the ID, expiry date, and the domain name. Then all that's left to do is go ahead and log this to the console. Finally, we'll run this and we'll catch any errors and we'll simply log any errors to the console. Now let's run npm start and we should see that we have a list of all of those domains logged to the console. So here we can see that the SDK works successfully, making a request to the ENS subgraph using the build SDK function that we imported from our graph client. Instead of using the functions that are generated for our queries, we can import execute and we can execute any GraphQL query using a document node. Let's also import the get registrations document so we can pass it to the execute function. Then inside of main, we can destructure the data and from data, we'll fetch registrations and we'll await execute. And here we can see that we can pass in any GraphQL operation that is of a document node and we'll pass it the get registrations document. We'll also need to pass it some empty variables. Now with this saved, we can run npm run start and we should get the same response that we did previously. So at this point, we are using a single source, which is the ENS protocol. But what if we want to add a different one, such as Uniswap? Here we'll pass it the handler and the GraphQL endpoint. Then I can go ahead and run npm run code gen. With that run, the graph client is then updated to include multiple sources now. So we have ENS and Uniswap, and then we'll have an updated GraphQL schema, and then we can run npm run dev, and inside of Graphical on our local machine, if we then explore the documentation for our schema and look at the query, we can see that we have some fields for Uniswap and some tokens and the pairs, which come from the Uniswap API. And then if we scroll down, we should then see that we have the domain query, transfer query, and the registrations from earlier. So now we have two APIs working together inside of one graph. You can then go on to create all of your different queries for those different subgraphs and you can connect them and we'll learn more about that in a different video. So hopefully this has given you enough to get started with using the graph client.